The logistic strategical study of what we are going to do for any problem. It may be personal or national or global. So anything that is understood is known as avagamana and anything that is understood with depth is known as adhyayana and anything that is researched with application tools properly designed is known as anusandhana and implementation of the same thing is known as anusthana. So these things are the four limits of knowledge and wherever you see panikrihana is a specific nomenclature. It is known as pradhana namakarana in which you call all marriages as panikrihana that is holding the hand. But by mentioning just holding the hand, it does not mean that the marriage ceremony consists of only holding the hand. Holding the hand is one among the innumerable ceremonies as it is having some prominence or attraction or some set of climax significance in that totalitarian issues of various other ceremonial rites being described. It is given a prominence in the nomenclature. Adigrahana is prominent among the various actions. Likewise, if you say Adhyayana, it starts with Avagamana. You should understand things deeply with a personalized approach. Whatever you see, that is the greatness of patriots. Who are patriots? For example, that's what I told in the lecture on charity. If you feel that you are hungry, that is an instinct. If you feel that somebody else is hungry, that is charity. So whenever you feel for something else, whenever you are impact or whenever you are self-instinctive stimulus, he is very much broadened for the external and the extended offers, then you are becoming a cosmopolitan citizen, you are becoming a dutiful citizen, you are becoming also a dutiful citizen. Far you serve for the nation within your possible might. Likewise, each and every person, just as in his physical organism, wherever he gets wound or injury, the whole system is disturbed. Likewise, in the social mechanism, being the part of the social mechanism, he is a component of the social compound. So anything that happens conspicuously, Anything that happens visibly in the society should disturb, otherwise the person is having a problem. Any person with a free mind, any person with an impeccable mental status and spiritual mood, certainly he will see that anything that happens in the society disturbs him. And it tells the person to have an intellectual boost to derive a solution. So you have mentioned Adhyayana, <coughs> that includes also Avagamana, then coming into Adhyayana, then coming into Anusandhana, whatever the speaker who has told very much he has created an alert, alarm and also aversion. Aversion about the allergy forces, alarm about the impending dangers and alert for the people to go for preemptive measures he has created. That is known as anusandhana. It should be put into anushtana. Each and every member should do that. Why it is not happening? I told about vyapti. I told about vyapti. Vyapti is pervasion. See, whenever you are teaching somebody, it should go deeper and broader. If you talk with 10 people, it should reach the abysmal core of a person's executive skill. So that he thinks, even if he goes there, it should be deeply carved inside the abysmal core of a mind, so that in spite of going back to his house, in spite of being flooded and crowded and clouded by his routinal daily works and pressures, in spite of having various other commitments and various other diversifications in life, still he should have a corner by which he is continuously thinking about that, which is lingering and lingering in their ears and mind. Number one. Number two, whatever a person carries from here, it should be conveyed to the working people, effective people, targeted audience. Each and everybody should be a deeper receiver of the knowledge and a broader transmitter of the knowledge. Then only it will spread to a lot of people. How it will be possible? It will be possible only by two means. One, the person who carves, he should be a very, very highly incorporated potential person. Either the deliverer of the lecture should be a great acharya. Because of his power, his radiance, his penance and austerity, he could make it deeper. Because each and every person is naturally inclined towards a negative pressure. They are very much attracted to physical attraction, oratory powers, various other dramatic presentations and projections by which politicians, media people, everybody, they are attracted to the society to get attracted with genuinity, to get attracted with serenity, purity, sanctity and divinity to get attracted with something that is transcendental, real, eternal and perennial, it requires a different understanding, different power of absorption. That assimilation is not there with common people. They are attracted only by ephemeral peripherals. That should be a radiant person to see that they are sealed indelibly with the mark of wisdom, the mark of patriotism, the mark of productive benevolence by which he can serve the society with real ease and comfort. The second thing, even though if the person is not so, in the case of Gandhiji, you know that he saw the Alexandra drama and he got some transformation as per his biography. 
And the same drama has been acted. Even the person who has acted, whether he has transformed or not, after acting in the same drama for decades, that is the best thing. But still, even if the other side is not pure or genuine, if it creates even an imaginary structure or sheath of genuinity, it creates real impact in the minds of the people, provided that they are so benefited and blessed by a divine framework. So either the deliverer of the message or receiver of the message should be hyper-potentialized with a divine structure unless with efficacious spreading of the message will not be there. Naturally, anybody creating awareness in the society, they have God said. Anybody, those who are creating vigilance in the society, see, it may catch fire. As your hut is near to firewood station, it may catch fire. That is the first alarm. Second day is your neighbor's hut is catching fire, it may spread to you. That is the second alarm. Your head is on fire, that is the third alarm. All alarms have been given and the alarm givers have been totally exhausted. Even after witnessing and experiencing various incidents of untold miseries, melancholic, cyclic, perpetuality, still the people, they have not got the essential, sufficient type of vigilance by which they can control. After some show or some series organized for two or three weeks, whenever there is a sensation issue, afterwards they become very casual and normal as if nothing has happened. It is the mind of a great yogi. Gatasun, Agatasuscha, Namsochanti Pandita. For the people alive and dead, no distinguishing is made by great scholars or renowned people. It is a statement of Bhagavad Gita. It is not for social operation. These people are becoming irresponsibly ascetic in nature so that they behave as if they are renowned. So we want to have a perennial vigilance in the society. Whenever they are getting into problem, immediately there is something. He has mentioned about appeasement of minorities. It is only for, not only for minorities. Poor people, how they can be appeased, how farmers can be appeased, how women can be appeased. The people are technical and tactical. Whether they are having clemency and compassion or not, they are having a concrete system of tactics, how they can utilize or exploit the weakness of the society. This type of appeasement or diversion of issues towards various things. Whenever there is a problem coming, immediately it is diversified somewhere else so that this thing is forgotten. Somebody used to tell one story when these farmers agitated in the period of Indira Gandhi. Immediately each and every village was supplied a, a good TV. At that time only Doordarshan was there. And if the people enjoyed Doordarshan, how they would have been suffering in their family? Huh? The suffering would have been comparatively more. If a person could enjoy Doordarshan, he should have a comparatively greater suffering. So that was given as a diversifier and diverter for the minds of the people in the extra years. So Adhyayana is a full-time structure which includes Avagamana, then being processed by Anusandhana and Adhrishtana. And now coming to the real point, what is Vishwadhyayana? It may be a lot of things may be there in your principles, in your budgetary exercises and in your operative modules. According to me, Vishwadhyayana is Vishwasya Adhyayana, Vishwabhavena Adhyayana, Vishwamukha Adhyayana, Vishwam Adhikritya Adhyayana, Vishwena Adhyayana, Vishwaya Adhyayana, innumerable things we can make from Samasa. Number one, Vishwadhyayana, technically it shows cosmology, to know about the world and its origin. That we know already. We don't think about all of these things. We have emerged and expanded. Now what we are going to do is more emergent. Second thing is Vishwa Adhyayana. Understanding about the common aspects of the global emergence in socio-political and economical issues for having a common governance or understandable mutual brotherhood in various nations. <coughs> Number three, Vishwa Adhyayana means Vyapaka Adhyayana. To have a universal or multidimensional or consummate vision of Indian tradition of knowledge. Number four, application of Indian tools of yoga, Ayurveda, Vedanta and other traditional sciences for psychopathology and epistemopathology and ontopathology of the whole global kingdoms. Number five is understanding the contribution of the contemporary status of India for the emerging global things in science, technology and other social variations. Understanding about the place of India as a superpower or as a power or as a surviving, establishing and progressing nation in the global scenario. Impact of the global development, global culture, intercultural clashes as well as communal clashes that exist inside and outside India and the role of them either reducing and debilitating the standardization of political, social, economical and general survival decencies of our land. So we can just keep on giving 10 or 15 exemplifications <coughs> by just taking the word Vishwa Dhyana. So it is about the world, it is about the contribution of India for the world, it is about the impact of the universe for that is the worldly nations and their situations for India. It is also understanding with a comparative style. It is understanding about a futuristic world where everybody can amicably survive 
and serve each other. So this type of various contemporary historical, futuristic, multidimensional 